Well, the basic concept in 11 is that the forces of natural selection are the fundamental forces that tune patterns of aging. Um, so if there is some feature of an animal that changes its forces of natural selection, then you get an evolution of its pattern of aging accordingly. And the example I'm very much enamored with is the, the turtles and tortoises that have thick shells, uh, which give them great protection from the attacks of uh, predators. Um, <clears throat> now that means their mortality rates in nature are lower than they otherwise would be, which in turn means their forces of natural selection are strengthened, and as a result, our basic expectation, therefore, is those should be relatively long-lived organisms compared to other reptiles that don't have such a great uh, defensive uh, encasement. And uh, a simple test of this is to compare the uh, aging patterns in protected conditions in zoos and labs of uh, soft-shelled turtles and tortoises versus the hard-shelled or thicker-shelled uh, relatives of those same turtles and under totally protected conditions, the soft-shelled turtles will age and die off faster than the ones with thicker shells, exactly reflecting this basic concept of defensive um, armor uh, yielding slower rates of aging thanks to evolution. Now, it's important to understand that if you take your soft-shelled turtle in the lab and bolt onto it an artificial thick shell, they don't live a day longer. They might even die sooner. The point is that the gift of the benefit of having the harder shell is one of the conditioning of an evolutionary process, which then takes many generations to produce benefit. So, Michael, how would this affect uh, humanity as a species, if at all? Well, <laughs> human beings over the last... Uh, uh, million years have become more and more impregnable relative to the beasties out there that might want to eat us. So we've now reached the point where your likelihood of being killed by a bear, mountain lion, polar bear is relatively small unless you're one of these complete nature-loving idiots who wants to go out there and frolic with the bears with no weapon. Um, of course they do exist. Uh, that means that everything else being equal, we should over the next half million years, evolve still greater lifespans naturally without the uh, medical profession having anything to do with it. Okay, so, would it, but it will take a very long time, you're, you're telling me, because I think many people, including myself, um, have a, a bias about m maybe the process of natural selection and evolution working rather faster than I think it does. Ah, uh, impatience, impatience. Yes, well, that's the whole thing about evolution, unless you're working with a very uh, short-lived animal like I do, which is the fruit fly, you're going to be waiting a long time to see the effects of evolution. So, in fact, um, I wrote an article with a colleague, Larry Muller, about 20 years ago on um, uh, the uh, past, uh, future, and present of the evolution of human aging. And my point really was, one of our points in that article, um, was that there's no point waiting around for these things to happen. Uh, evolution can tell us what's fundamentally possible um, biochemically, uh, physiologically, and we can go out there and get it on our own. Uh, we don't need to wait for evolution to give us these things. Great. Thank you very much.